Hey guys, Nahida is back. Her release has provided not only an adorable vegetable archon, but game-changing team comps for both whales and free-to-play. From her incredible Dendro application, her versatility on many team comps, to her ability to read our inner thoughts, the Duke Duke Archon has excited many of our fellow travelers. I wanted to create a guide that not only offered an explanation to her kit, but a resource for new and seasoned players to be able to further their knowledge on this incredible character. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Nikita's abilities, talents, constellations, artifacts, playstyles, and rotations. This video will also be divided into chapters for each topic, which you can skip to as well. I also stream on Twitch every week monday to friday make sure to come by and say hi to the community at twitch.tv slash trevito gaming starting with her basics as you can see on her normal attack akara she strikes an enemy four times dealing dendro damage and applying the dendro element to enemies every 2.5 seconds or after three normal attacks but if you use her charge attack she deals significantly more damage and applies dendro on every single hit take note though that while Worth the process to apply Dendro on every charge attack, it comes at a high cost of 50 stamina every proc. Next thing to discuss is Nahida's elemental skill, all schemes to know. Easily the most important ability and the key to Nahida's role in team comps as a Dendro applicator. To apply, you can either tap Nahida's skill, which will make her do a low range quick cast to enemies directly around her, or hold and drag the skill to go into the scoped animation where Nikita will apply the Seed of Skanda mark to all enemies that is seen through the lens. Activated, she deals AoE damage as she marks Dendro on up to eight enemies with her Seeds of Skanda. And for all enemies stringed together by this skill, they'll all simultaneously be receiving damage based on reactions. The ability's scaling is based off of her attack and EM. Nahida's seeds can be triggered every 2.5 seconds and are the catalyst for her Tri-Karma Purification damage. Since this ability connects enemies together, the application of Dendro reactions will apply to all as well and remain even while Nahida is off-field. Why is this so significant? You have the ability now to swap out of Nahida while her Tri-Karma Purification remains on enemies and trigger other elemental reactions in addition to. If you're lucky enough to get her to Constellation 2, her ability is even further enhanced. We'll cover that a little later, though. Oh, and also, one of the coolest features of this ability off-field is to gather items that may just be out of reach or just not wanting to run around picking everything up. If you use it on NPCs in Sumeru, it might trigger some special dialogue. My door. Ah, well. It shouldn't be a problem. Moving on to Nahida's Burst. Activating Nahida's Elemental Burst, Illusory Heart, will manifest the Court of Dreams and create the Shrine of Maya. Activating this burst will surround you in a gigadome of green glory. This ring applies different buffs according to the elemental types of your team comp. Pyro character will increase TKP's damage. Electro units decrease the time between Tri Karma Purification and Trigger Intervals, which basically means our favorite radishes of little seeds will activate faster. Hydro units increase the duration of your burst, allowing for longer uptimes. These effects will last even if Nahida is off field as long as the characters are within this gigantic ring. Depending on what teams you have and like to play, you can try out different combinations and having two of the same element further increase these effects depending on talent level. Moving on to her A1 passive. This will give whoever is on field a 25% additional elemental mastery as long as they stay inside the shrine. This buff is dependent on whoever has the highest elemental mastery stat on the team. See that change in Kazuo's EM stat? That's Nahida's A1 at work. This 25% is based off of whoever your team comp's highest EM stat holder is. In my example, it was Nahida. Next, we need to move on to Nahida's A4 passive. Will only trigger if her EM is greater than 200. It grants 0.1% bonus damage and 0.03% crit rate to her seeds when using her elemental skill, all schemes to know. It caps at a whopping 80% bonus damage and 24% crit rate. So ideally, 1,000 Elemental Mastery is encouraged. That way, you can maximize this A4 passive. Anything more than 1,000 EM will not contribute to the skill, but anything over 1,000 EM will still continue to increase the base damage triggered by TKP. And by the way, getting 1K EM isn't a necessity and isn't always your best choice, which we will discuss later when talking about artifacts. Moving on to Constellations. Her C1 Constellation, the Seed of Stored Knowledge, basically adds one to the elements counted to the buffs during your burst. It's an okay constellation as it doesn't increase Nahida's burst value, but the plus one element allows you to maximize your burst potential, which is pretty nice. Her next constellation, the Root of All Fullness, 
C2 is by far the most notable constellation of the bunch, adding a flat 20% crit rate and 100% crit damage to all bloom related reactions and a 30% defense shred to quicken reactions. Having such high defense shred is rare and extremely powerful since it allows you to deal a significant amount of extra damage since there aren't many things that lower defense. This is quite a powerful constellation, but is not necessary whatsoever to be able to clear any content in the game. If you do plan on pulling for constellations, I'd say the second one is a great stopping point as any further becomes extremely heavy investment. C3 increases the level of her elemental skill by three. Maximum upgrade level is 15. Only an increase to her talent multiplier is not that great, especially when your teams are mostly quick and bloom reactions, which don't fully utilize her talent multiplier. C4, the stem of manifest inference. When one, two, three, Four or more nearby opponents are marked with Nahida's seeds, her EM will be increased by 100, 120, 140, or 160 respectively. This EM can let you build more towards crit while she's still able to reach 1000 EM, which is where most of her buffs cap out. And running two Dendro units off her Dendro Resonance, adding 100 EM to your entire team. Extremely helpful if you're lacking an EM. C5, the Leaves of Enlightening Speech. Increases the level of her Elemental Burst by three. Maximum upgrade level is 15. A mediocre constellation as it provides a little to no value for Nahida herself considering the investment. C6, the Fruit of Reason's culmination. When Nahida hits with normal or charged attacks, after unleashing Illusory Heart, she will use Tri-Karma Purification, Karmic Oblivion. C6 bonus allows for all seed-connected opponents to be hit with Dendro damage based on 200% of Nahida's attack and 400% of her elemental mastery. An extremely powerful constellation, you basically destroy everything. It encourages a more DPS Nahida playstyle, focusing on crit and Dendro damage. Now, is it necessary to pull for Nahida's cons? Not really, since our favorite Radish Archon will still absolutely demolish with her elemental reactions without any additional constellations. But if you responsibly invest into her C2 and 6 being her best bang for a buck, arguably one of the best sub dps support characters in the game i'd say it is well worth pulling for any additional investment is a bonus moving on to weapons nahida is a catalyst wielder and when it comes to weapons it generally depends on your build more often than not it is better to try to reach 1000 em than prioritize crit rate and crit damage with that being said we'll be talking about nahida's best in slot and a couple of free-to-play options as well thousand folding dreams is nahida's best in slot for obvious reasons very obvious reasons at level 90, it gives 542 attack and a whopping 265 EM, which is a lot, and gives you room to prioritize crit damage and rate on your artifacts. Additionally, the elemental type of your teammates stacks even more EM or flat damage percent to Nahida. Kagura's Verity is extremely close to being best in slot for Nahida, giving 66.2% crit damage when you use your elemental skill. It increases elemental skill damage by 12% with a maximum of three stacks. This means you can get 36% increased skill damage, which is extremely powerful, as well as 12% all elemental damage bonus once you reach three stacks. It will take 15 plus seconds at best, but in team where you're not forced on a single character for a long time, <coughs> Sino, it's easily doable. The Widsith is far more of an on-field option for Nahida since it gives 55.1% crit damage. Plus, the passive gives a lot of extremely good stats, but at the same time is one of the reasons why it's not that good since it's very RNG based. And if you don't get lucky, you're going to do minimal damage. Sack Frags is also a really good weapon, coming in with 221 EM. Although its passive is not that good for Nihita, as she already has a low cooldown on her skill, the 221 EM is still incredibly valuable. When it comes to free-to-play options, Mapamare is a craftable weapon, giving 110 EM with a really good passive. When you trigger an elemental reaction, it grants 8% elemental damage bonus stacking up to 16%, which encourages a more on-field playstyle. Magic Guide is the best 3-star option for Nihita, and is arguably the best free-to-play option, giving 187 EM, allowing you to prioritize other stats. While the 12% damage with high Hydro and Electro passive sounds nice, Dendro is a strong, strong element. Strong enough to completely wipe elements other than Pyro or Cryo, and only keep Dendro remaining, which basically makes the passive hardly useful. Magic Guide is still a really good choice due to the copious amounts of EM, plus it's a three-star weapon, which makes it extremely easy to R5. Vonius Codex is also an option for a more off-field support Nahida that'll give you a ton of elemental particles and is pretty good if your Nahida does not have her ER requirement. Now, when it comes to my recommendation, fortunately, you don't have to have the top two options. Sacrificial Frags can be an incredible one for an Elemental Mastery build. For a more DPS type playstyle, Wind Sith can suit you perfectly well. Those two come up pretty often on the banners and a lot of people do have them. Now, if you don't, you do have multiple free to play options with Magic Guide, and Mapamare, making her a very versatile and easy character to build with many different playstyle options. 
all which are pretty good and capable of 36 starring the abyss with both off-field and on-field driver Nahida, without requiring a lot of investment for whichever playstyle you prefer. For artifacts, always go Deepwood. The only other option would be going two-piece or four-piece gilded only if you don't have Deepwood. Deepwood will always be Nahida's best in slot and going four piece Deepwood provides incredible value with 30% elemental resistance shred and will always be the best option even if you have a good gilded set. Luckily both are in the spire of solitary enlightenment domain so you can farm them at the exact same time. Main stats are highly team and playstyle dependent. EM, Dendro, and Crit are usually preferred on an on-field where you're receiving other sources of EM. On top of her A1 passive, gives you a substantial amount of elemental mastery to where you get value from her A4 without sacrificing such stats as damage and crit. So if you're above 1k EM, then sacrificing a bit of EM is okay. If not, then prioritizing 1000 EM as that's where Ascension buffs cap out at. Although getting 1000 elemental mastery isn't always the best choice since if you're going for an on-field Nahida, she'll be getting EM via her A1, thus getting her closer to the 1000 EM cap. Going for a crit rate or damage circlet is better than forcing a bad EM circlet for on-field DPS Nahida. Goblet can be Dendro damage or elemental mastery, Sans elemental mastery, circlet elemental mastery, or crit. For substats, you're going to be prioritizing EM until you've met your requirement of that, and then crit rate and crit damage. Attack is also a skill that is not lost entirely, but is not as effective as elemental mastery towards her skill. And for energy recharge requirements, for on-field Nahida, 120% give or take. Off-field, 130% to 140% solo Dendro. Double Dendro can mitigate this with different Dendro characters acting as a battery. But being at 120% is generally fine as your burst is pretty... Okay, so you understood what she's intended to do, and now you've built her. How the heck do you use her in your team rotation? Depending on what teams you choose will vary exactly which order you switch her in and out from. The basic principle is to start off with Nahida's skill, marking all the enemies possible. From there, you can either burst or swap off depending on your team. Once her skill is applied, you can rotate your team to cause elemental reactions on her already applied Tri-Karma Purification and watch your enemies take damage. Popular team comps I've seen are Nahida, Shingcho, Yellen, and an EM Raiden or Kuki Shinobu. We have Nahida on field. It is the best Hyper Bloom team in the game with an insane amount of single target Hydro application, which can still shred any AoE content in the game, anything killing team. Just be wary of Cryo Shields, as they have 5x more HP against Dendro, Cryo, and Hydro. Alhytham, Nahida, Kuki, and Shingcho or Yellen is another popular spread bloom team, and thusly dubbed a quick bloom team, with Alhytham on field and Nahida acting more as an EM support and 4-piece Deepwoods debuffer. She also greatly assists in practically removing Alhytham's ER requirement. Just be wary of your Hydro unit's ER. The difference in these two teams is that Alhytham has a way higher ceiling, but both teams have a very solid floor. However, the first team can easily 36 star the Abyss with minimal investment, whilst the second team requires some investment to flourish and will surpass the first team with enough time. I would recommend Nahida, Kuki Shinobu, Electro Traveler, Kaya and Shingcho, or an on-field Barbara, with every character bar Nahida and Kuki themselves being given to you or available in the shop. This is a very strong Hyper Fridge team, which has both the benefit of high damage granted via Hyper Boom, but also the safety of freezing enemies with Kaya, the AFK Archon team. This team is funny and actually effective. It consists of Raiden, Farina, Nahida, and Zhongli. While optimal play generally is not just standing around, with this team you post up on Zhongli's pillar. Important to note though, Raiden must be on a Hyper Bloom build for this team to be effective. Cycle through your rotation and watch everything melt. Ayato Hyper Bloom. Nahida heavily boosted the effectiveness of an already broken reaction Hyper Bloom. This team consists of Ayato, Kazuha, Nahida, and Kuki. Ayato for on field, Kuki for sustainability and electro application, Kazuha for swirl and grouping, all tied together with Nahida's Dendro application and Tri Karma purification. A very effective lineup. Eula Hyper Bloom, an extremely fun and solid comp to run. It consists of Eula, Farina, Nahida, and Kuki. Nahida, Kuki, and Farina are enabling Hyper Bloom while Eula is being insanely buffed and dropping heavy on field damage. A new way to play Eula in the current meta. Hu Tao Burgeon. The Funeral Director has an interesting comp when it comes to Denjo reactions. This team consists of Hu Tao, Yellen, Nahida, and Zhongli. The synergy of Hu Tao and Yellen combined with Nahida creates a new way to successfully play her. Kazuha Salad. Who doesn't like their vegetables? This team consists of Kazuha, Shingcho, Fischl, and Nahida. A sort of quick swap team with Nahida serving as an on-field driver. The team synergizes extremely well, but will require effective dodging for survivability. 
Yai Miko Aggravate, a solid comp consisting of off-field and reaction-based damage. It consists of Yai Miko, Fischl, Kazuha, and Nahida. Yai and Fischl for off-field electro damage and application, Kazuha for swirl and grouping, and Nahida to complete the combo. As before, this team will require effective dodging as it focuses on heavy damage with a lack of defense or healing. As always, there are alternative replacements to these team comps, so please comment below if you're curious about additional options. Possibly the most important question, should you pull? I will typically say that most characters are not must-pull units. With that being said, when it comes to Nihita, we're as close as it gets. Dendro reactions have become an essential aspect of Genshin Impact's meta, and while there are many solid Dendro comps that do not include Nihita, the addition of her will be a night and day difference. Additionally, her kit is complete at C0, making her extremely free-to-play friendly. Thank you guys so much for watching my in-depth Nahida guide. The Radish Archon has remained a top Dendro unit since the moment she released and her viability is going nowhere soon. If you made it this far, please make sure to comment Duke Duke Archon so I know you're a true homie. My team puts a ton of work into these videos to offer the most entertaining, easy to follow, and accurate guides we can. So if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. It helps me out an absolute ton. Best of luck on your polls and I'll see you guys in the next one.